Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 Las Vegas. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at HPE Discover Las Vegas 2016 and one of the hottest topics that's going on, yes it was cloud, yes it was big data, but IOT, it brings all those things together, it impacts a huge industrial world that's already uh, in place and there's a huge opportunity for new investments, uh, revolutions, excitement, and uh, Meg made a big announcement on the keynote this morning, so we're really happy to have Doug Othout, the VP of IOT Marketing. What a great job to be in today. It's a very great job to be in today. The world is expanding and getting much bigger in IOT as we speak. So it's, it's everything, There's, as everybody likes to say, the car is probably your biggest IOT wearable. There's cars all over the show. It's industrial with GE. They had the announcements with, with National Instruments was up there today with Meg. It's really kind of an all-encompassing technology. It is, and what it's doing is bringing together multiple industries, whether it's automotive, manufacturing, but what we're doing is the manufacturing plants, the cars are getting IT built into them. So with the Internet of Things, there's going to be a lot of data and a lot of information to absorb, and you need to process that where it's being created to make the right decisions, and that's what we announced today, is our IoT capabilities to make decisions at the edge. Which is pretty, pretty interesting, because there's the sensors, which everybody knows about, and then there's the communication back to the mothership, but it is really important to be able to push that compute, push that intelligence out to the edge devices so they can be doing things there as opposed to having to cycle back to, to the mothership. And it's extremely important in industries like healthcare and manufacturing, where you want to be able to make real-time decisions Right, because the last thing you want is to have to send all the information all the way back to the mothership and wait three days to tell you to take that manufacturing line down because you're making um, ineffective devices. Or in healthcare, you want to be able to make those decisions at the hospital versus at the data center because you want to make the doctors more effective and, and, and more uh, productive in, the, in their jobs on a daily basis. You, know, you bring up a really interesting point. We, we've, we've talked to Bill Rue and the team at GE a lot. We, we love those guys, and you know they've done a great job out in, in the East Bay and the Bay Area building their software group from a small group to hundreds and hundreds, and I think now they're actually running all GE software from there. But when you talk to them, you, it, it's really about the entire life cycle of this experience. It's not just at the edge. It, it really allows you to kind of take a soup to nuts approach to the way people interact with technology and the way all these things connect together. Yeah, so especially with a company like GE, we're doing two things with them. We're really working on how do we make their equipment better, right? How do we make their jet engines, their manufacturing equipment better? But we're also working with them with our joint customers on how do we make their manufacturing site uh, incorporating, you know, um, internet of things at the edge, but also incorporating new product ca uh, capabilities and new product improvements. Uh, so GE is really doing two things with us. We're working on their products and we're also working with our joint customers together with GE Predicts. So I was going to say, you know, how are you working with, with GE? Where does HPE start? Where does GE start? But you, you bring up an interesting topic that came up earlier today, which is this kind of concept of IT versus OT, right? You guys have been doing IT for a long time. GE and big industrials have been doing OT for a long time. Now really, it's, it's a, it, they were probably kind of melded together before, but this is really more of a force mash, if you will. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the next wave, right? So IT has always been running the, the books, running the, the data center, running the software that runs your business, and then the operating teams always run the business, whether it's manufacturing, logistics, distribution, the healthcare environment itself. Now what's happening is these intelligent devices are hitting the street in these industries, and they want to make better decisions. So you have to connect them, and who connects them? IT connects them. So we're putting you know, data center technologies into the manufacturing plant so they can make real-time decisions, so they can do you know, machine learning right there so that you don't have to wait six years for the new product development cycle to start where you do the, you know, the analytics on what worked and what didn't work in the previous uh, life cycle of the product. So, um, Doug, talk a little bit about how important analytics is to this whole thing and how the ability to capture more data, store more data, not be sampling, you know, not be throwing stuff away, not have a liability of digital exhaust, but it's really a digital asset, if you will, that now you can do so much more with to better enable your operational technology. And yeah, the most valuable piece of the Internet of Things is collecting the data, okay? The, the problem with collecting the data is there's a lot of it. So you have to be able to acquire it quickly, but you also have to have a data model set up, which is where data analytics comes in, is what information is critical for you to make that decision 
in that point in time that day? And then what information do you want to store or, sh or share so that you can make product improvements in the, in the future, right? And that's where our announcement really comes in today. We announced new edge line converged IoT systems, which allow you to have high powered data center technology at the edge in the manufacturing plant so you can make real time decisions there. And then as you set up your data model, you decide what you're going to share back with the data center or the cloud so that in the future you can improve the product or do continuous learning off that and make improvements on the manufacturing floor or the process you know, factory. So from your point of view, shift gears a little bit, right? IoT is everything from my Fitbit, as we said, to my car, to GE running big turbines. Where do you see kind of the opportunities in the short term that's going to be the most impacted by IoT? Where's kind of the low-hanging fruit, if you will? There's two, there's two areas that are going to be most impactful in the short term. There is this efficiency gains in manufacturing and process industry, where if you have the right data, you can make your decisions on how to fix something better, right? So for example, if every month I have to do something to a machine to make sure it keeps running, if I have the real data from that machine, I can decide to not do it for 60, 90, 120 days because the machine is running fine. So what you do is instead of doing a time-based maintenance model, you do an actual data-based maintenance model. The second is connected cars. And connected cars for two reasons. The intelligence in the car, the entertainment in the car, and all the applications in the car is what everybody sees. But logistically, assisted cars, logistics for delivery, garbage collection. If you can do that more efficiently, avoid the traffic jams, avoid whatever's going on in the city, you can actually make the public employees much more efficient. Or your distribution company can make their beer distri distri distribution more, more efficient, right? So it's huge efficiency gains both in a connected vehicle as well as in smart manufacturing or smart processing. I love the maintenance example because because you may you may actually decide that you want to throttle the thing, right? You're running a turbine and there's a spike in the price of electricity and you know you might go past a maintenance uh, threshold, not not for safety, but you know, but you can make business decisions, not just simple time-based decisions on whatever factors at that moment you decide are the most relevant. You know, and I hate to say it, but oil went over fifty dollars a barrel today. Guess what happened? They turned more oil pumps back on. The ones they turned off when the oil was at $25 a barrel actually turned back on today. So you make real-time decisions based on the data of the day in the context of what's actually happening that day. You know, and you have to look at, does the oil refinery have enough efficiency, enough room to take in that oil so that you can get it through the process soon enough where you can collect your money. Right, right. right so having that data is nice. Having real-time analytics and real-time capabilities is the key to making more money or making better decisions. Love it. But there's a dark side, right? Security. We always got to bring in security, and I'm sure people are afraid of, you know, since I'm going to take charge of myself driving car, you know, grab control. So security obviously has got to be baked in everywhere. What are, what are you guys seeing on kind of the security front? What is kind of the philosophy that you're taking there? Because obviously big factories, you know, this is, this is uh, you know, not somebody giving me a virus on my Word document. This is a little bit more impactful, or certainly can be. Right, so we take security in three ways. First is the security of the devices. Okay, so you have to make sure the device is trusted. So we have an application from Aruba called ClearPass, which authenticates the device, gives it a profile, and makes sure it acts according to that profile. It connects to only certain things, it only communicates with certain things, and if it starts acting badly, the Aruba ClearPass can kick it off. So it doesn't stay on the network, so you avoid that intrusion. Second is, we look at the application that actually is getting the data and making sure it's secure. So if it gets infiltrated with some bad data or infiltrated with some sort of virus, we can actually protect the application from passing that information to someplace else or protect that application from going down. And then lastly is data protection. What do I do with the data once I collect it? And how do I store it? And what do I ship where, right? So it's very key to us that you have all three levels of security because if you don't, you know, your Fitbit could actually take your car offline, which would be a really a bad thing to do, especially if you're driving. So as you can hear, we are we are uh, you know here, <laughs> and we're shooting this live. So it's a little voice from up above. She's just happy that you got the security going on. Yep. So last word again. You are in a really fun space, a, a whole nother kind of wave of, of, of fantastic opportunity coming out of technology. What are you most excited about in the short term? What are you working on in the next six months? Kind of your top priorities. I'm most excited about is the two teams within a company coming together. You know, IT for years has been seen as a cost center. IT has been seen as somebody who keeps the business up and running. IT actually has the opportunity here and now to actually improve the processes within a company, improve products for a company, and actually make a huge difference. So the IT managers out there in the world, right, this is your chance to shine. Take this as an opportunity to go see your counterparts in engineering or in production and go make a difference in, you know, in what they do every day. It's true, you can really make a difference. You really can, All it's right. great. 
Well, Doug, thanks for taking a minute out of your busy day. You're probably one of the busiest guys uh, here at this show, I would imagine. At least today. At least today. <laughs> right. So thank you, Jeff. Absolutely. I'm Jeff Rick with, with Doug Othout. We are at HP Discover Las Vegas or HPE Discover Las Vegas 2016. Thanks for watching. Oh.